You know, I was just thinking, you two have been talking about this film premiered in September, and that's a long time to, to talk about these two roles. And do you ever feel like you're going into sort of a, a rote, Never, right? You never. No, I never feel like. No, that. no. Amazing. No, it's always fresh. Um, <laughs> That's the first time I've been asked that question. Yeah. So that we're and, and, you both, and you both sort of died and didn't know what to say. You just looked really frightened. At me. <laughs> I thought I'd let you speak first. Oh, thanks. That's kind I, of you. I don't, it's, it's rare that you've, you you have a film or a role that you you can talk about to this extent that actually fulfills part of the purpose of why we did the film in the first place, which is to get the story to as broad an audience as possible. Mm. And so while some of it is, uh, some of the timing is a bit odd, not least tonight, but you know, it, some of it is uh, repetitive in its nature. Mm -hmm. But weirdly, you don't, you don't regret it. You don't feel that you're churning out something that, you, if it's felt, it doesn't matter what you say, however many times you say it. If it really matters, then it, it, it comes across. And that's certainly the case with Anna Turing's story mm -hmm. and our, our involvement in it. So. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be nice to talk less about it after the weekend, but... Um, <laughs> what, what I also, don't you find as well, when you actually see a clip of the film, you go, oh, well, that was it, that's why we're doing this, that's why we're yeah. talking about it, it's just work we did on a day. And that's very odd, because you suddenly realise there is this aching gap between the end of, well, the days of production, and let alone then seeing it, let alone then talking about it again and again in this, in this context. And when did you wrap up production on it? Last November? Yeah, December the 1st or 2nd, oh, I think, yeah, yeah. of, of I think 2000. Yeah, for me it was November. Yeah. Right, so. Yeah. A long time a ago. That's me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, with Alan Turing, did you grow up knowing much about him, let Not alone enough. the extent to what he went through? Not really. I mean, I, I was aware of him through um, uh, Hugh Whitmore's play, Breaking the Code, which Derek Jacobi starred in, I mean, sublimely. And he was, uh, I saw the televised version of that play. A while ago, I mean, that we must have been 90s or early 90s, late 80s. I didn't late 80s, know but anything about it until we started. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> so you went, oh, I've been cast in something. <laughs> <laughs> no, no you, read, you read the article in The Guardian about I his I read part, the article in The Guardian, which would have been in about 2009, which is the first time that I'd heard of him. Well, tell me what was in this, this article in The Guardian. It was basically his story, and, and that it was one of the pushes to try and get him pardoned before he finally was. Um, and it was sort of saying his part in the Second World War of the breaking of the Enigma Code and what happened to him and what the British government did to him. And I remember reading it and being completely shocked and angry that I didn't know mm -hmm. who he was, what he'd done and what had been done to him. Um, and particularly as somebody who is a bit of a history buff, you know, I, I, and particularly with that period, I really enjoy reading about that period, how I'd missed it completely. Um, and I think it's the same, you know, it's the same reaction that people have when they come to the film and when they do find out about him for the first time, you can't help but be angry that to a large extent his, his name was, was lost, not to mathematicians and scientists, but to people outside that arena. So what drew you to agreeing to do it or, you know, going for it? I mean, it? I think it really was what drew everybody to the project, which was just that sense that there had been a great injustice and if you could possibly get the Alan Turing story out there to a, a wider public, then, then we all wanted to be a part of trying to do that, you know, and I think that's why when you look at this cast, it's an extraordinary cast of actors who are coming in for very small little bits because they wanted to all be a part of that. So it was, it was really that. And then, you know, I'm completely lucky for me that it was also an incredibly interesting character and, right. and somebody who was so, so inspiring and a sort of a pioneer in her own right. And she, I was thinking, you know, everyone around him kind of was obviously, her especially, because she was just forging ahead. She was this brilliant mathematician mm. who was recommended to the post. Oops. Yeah, her actual story is slightly different than the one in the film. Um, it's that really annoying thing when you go, no, this isn't a documentary. And I have to remember this isn't a documentary. So I kept going in there to Gray and the writer going, no, but no, but this isn't, this isn't quite right. And he's like, no, I know, but that would take 10 more pages to explain that. And we've got to tell the story. <laughs> yeah, OK. Um, but yeah, she was actually recommended to the Post by her Oxford prof professor. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was, she'd got a double first from Oxford. And, uh, and yeah, and he, he said, right, you need her at Bletchley. And it still took her two years. She went in initially as a, um, a secretary. And it took her two years, That's even though she'd been brought in, they wouldn't accept that she should be in the room. And it took her two years to get in there. And then once she was in the room that she you know, should have been in, she was paid a fraction of what the men were paid. Mm -hmm. So eventually all of the guys kind of went, okay, well, we'll try and get you more money. So they said that she was a linguist, even though she couldn't speak any other language apart from English, <laughs> so that they could get her a tiny bit of a pay rise. Just not good enough. Not good enough. No. Right. <laughs> Do you feel like um, there is this expectation in these feature movies that is unrealistic? 
of, you know, this, this is our history lesson seems to be often an expectation. I think it, it also undermines the intelligence of audiences. I think people, we're, we're canny enough now as, as, as a populace going to see films about topics of reality to know, you know, that these are, the, they stretch credibility, they conflate timelines, mm -hmm. they, they conflate characters sometimes. People know they're not going to watch a, a solid truth from start to finish. Mm -hmm. And no, you know, based on true events. This is what it's. It's nine. I, I don't know any film I've seen of this ilk that doesn't say that. that no. And a film is a film. It's a two-hour piece of material that tell, takes you on a narrative journey. I think it's, it's what, what is drama as opposed to what is documentary. Well, exactly. You know, and nobody's trying to pretend that this is a documentary. You're trying to get to the truth of that emotional core of something, right. which is different from absolutely every single fact being. Completely do we want truth is, from right? Picasso and Guernica? You know, mm -hmm. just, I, do you not get, understand the emotion or the intention of this distorted image of destruction through the abstract? Do you need a photograph of it to understand it? No, you look at that painting, you get a lot of what Guernica must have mm -hmm. felt like, the mm -hmm. destruction, the terror, the horror, the blood and the carnage. And I, it, it, I'm not comparing our film to, Guernica, uh, to, to Picasso, but you know, there is that, there's that rift between reality and art, which is endlessly fascinating for us. Mm -hmm. I mean, whether they're fictionalized stories, you know, magical realism or symbolism in any form other than a sort of pictorial reality. Um, I think that's why we, you know, we gravitate towards poems. You know, we, we, we deal, our lives may be prose, but, but, but art is poetry, isn't it? It's about extrapolating things and creating a, a broader, deepening understanding that goes further than reportage. Yet year after year, it seems like film after film, this is something that seems to be an evergreen you know, expectation or something. There's a, what you're saying absolutely makes sense. This is art. Yet there's a tricky balance, right? Because there's this huge expectation, especially if you're playing real people, mm -hmm. people who knew those people. And, Birdman, um, Whiplash, <laughs> Boyhood. They're three fictional films of outstanding brilliance and uniqueness. I, I don't, th I think, mm. you know, there's always room in every cultural, moment for, 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 for both. Mm. And I don't see that there's any more weight to one than the other. Mm. Um, as long as... Yeah, I think you have to be honest about you go, if you want the, the reality, then read the Andrews, Andrew Hodges biography, yeah. and that is absolutely, you know, trying to tell the reality through his point of view. By the way, he which wasn't is always there, exactly. Yeah, and he wasn't there, it's still a point of view, yeah. so, you know, who knows, but, but no, that is not what film drama is for yes you're trying to tell as much of the truth as you possibly can but actually in two hours i mean wh when i said before i'd come up with things that were true about joan clark and say yeah but what about this i mean particularly the equal pay thing you think okay in two hours about the biopic of alan turing how do you fit the equal pay story for joan clark in there and it is 10 more pages and that is 10 more minutes in the film or 15 more minutes and actually you need to hand it in and it's got to be whatever this is an hour and 45 or two hours and suddenly that doesn't you know i mean it, it's mm -hmm. There's a tear there, isn't there? Because you do feel protected yeah, you do. as an actor of, of the legacy of the person you're playing. And it's you do make the argument for the truth yeah. as well, but you it's you also understand the other side. Yeah.